Western is a genre of fiction incorporating Western lifestyle which tell stories set primarily in the latter half of the 19th century in the American Old West, often centering on the life of a nomadic cowboy or gunfighter armed with a revolver and a rifle who rides a horse. Cowboys and gunslingers typically wear Stetson hats, neckerchief bandanas, vests, spurs, cowboy boots and buckskins alternatively dusters. Recurring characters include the aforementioned cowboys, Native Americans, bandits, lawmen, bounty hunters, outlaws, gamblers, soldiers especially mounted cavalry, such as buffalo soldiers, and settlers farmers, ranchers, and townsfolk. The ambience is usually punctuated with a Western music score, including American and Mexican folk music such as country, Native American music, New Mexico music, and rancheras. Westerns often stress the harshness of the wilderness and frequently set the action in an arid, desolate landscape of deserts and mountains. Often, the vast landscape plays an important role, presenting a mythic vision of the plains and deserts of the American West. Specific settings include ranches, small frontier towns, saloons, railways, wilderness, and isolated military forts of the Wild West. Common plots include the construction of a railroad or a telegraph line on the wild frontier. Ranchers protecting their family ranch from rustlers or large landowners or who build a ranch empire. Revenge stories, which hinge on the chase and pursuit by someone who has been wronged. Stories about cavalry fighting Native Americans. Outlaw gang plots. Stories about a lawman or bounty hunter tracking down his quarry. Many westerns use a stock plot of depicting a crime, then showing the pursuit of the wrongdoer, ending in revenge and retribution, which is often dispensed through a shootout or quick draw duel. The western was the most popular Hollywood genre from the early 20th century to the 1960s. Western films first became well attended in the 1930s. John Ford's landmark Western adventure Stagecoach became one of the biggest hits in 1939 and it made John Wayne a mainstream screen star. The popularity of Westerns continued in the 1940s, with the release of classics such as Red River 1948. Westerns were very popular throughout the 1950s and 1960s. Many of the most acclaimed westerns were released during this time, including High Noon (1952), Shane (1953), The Searchers (1956), Cat Ballou (1965), The Wild Bunch (1969), and Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid (1969). Classic westerns such as these have been the inspiration for various films about western type characters in contemporary settings, such as Junior Bonner, 1972, set in the 1970s, and The Three Burials of Melchiades Estrada, 2005, set in the 21st century. Topic: <laughs> Themes The Western genre sometimes portrays the conquest of the wilderness and the subordination of nature in the name of civilization or the confiscation of the territorial rights of the original, Native American, inhabitants of the frontier. The Western depicts a society organized around codes of honor and personal, direct or private justice, frontier justice, dispensed by gunfights. These honor codes are often played out through depictions of feuds or individuals seeking personal revenge or retribution against someone who has wronged them e.g., True Grit has revenge and retribution as its main themes. This Western depiction of personal justice contrasts sharply with justice systems organized around rationalistic, abstract law that exist in cities, in which social order is maintained predominantly through relatively impersonal institutions such as courtrooms. The popular perception of the Western as a story that centers on the life of a semi-nomadic wanderer, usually a cowboy or a gunfighter. A showdown or duel at high noon featuring two or more gunfighters is a stereotypical scene in the popular conception of Westerns. In some ways, such protagonists may be considered the literary descendants of the knight errant which stood at the center of earlier extensive genres such as the Arthurian romances. Like the cowboy or gunfighter of the Western, the knight errant of the earlier European tales and poetry was wandering from place to place on his horse, fighting villains of various kinds and bound to no fixed social structures but only to their own innate code of honor. And like knights errant, the heroes of Westerns frequently rescue damsels in distress. 
Similarly, the wandering protagonists of westerns share many characteristics with the ronin in modern Japanese culture. The western typically takes these elements and uses them to tell simple morality tales, although some notable examples e.g. the later westerns of John Ford or Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven, about an old hired killer are more morally ambiguous. Westerns often stress the harshness and isolation of the wilderness and frequently set the action in an arid, desolate landscape. Western films generally have specific settings such as isolated ranches, Native American villages, or small frontier towns with a saloon. Oftentimes, these settings appear deserted and without much structure. Apart from the wilderness, it is usually the saloon that emphasizes that this is the Wild West, it is the place to go for music raucous piano playing, women often prostitutes, gambling draw poker or five-card stud, drinking beer or whiskey, brawling and shooting. In some westerns, where civilization has arrived, the town has a church, a general store, a bank and a school, in others, where frontier rules still hold sway, it is, as Sergio Leone said, where life has no value. Topic. Film Topic. Characteristics The American Film Institute defines Western films as those set in the American West that embody the spirit, the struggle and the demise of the new frontier. The term Western, used to describe a narrative film genre, appears to have originated with a July 1912 article in Motion Picture World magazine. Most of the characteristics of Western films were part of 19th-century popular Western fiction and were firmly in place before film became a popular art form. Western films commonly feature protagonists such as cowboys, gunslingers, and bounty hunters, who are often depicted as semi-nomadic wanderers who wear Stetson hats, bandanas, spurs, and buckskins, use revolvers or rifles as everyday tools of survival and as a means to settle disputes using frontier justice. Protagonists ride between dusty towns and cattle ranches on their trusty steeds. Western films were enormously popular in the silent film era 1894 to 1927. With the advent of sound in 1927-28, the major Hollywood studios rapidly abandoned westerns, leaving the genre to smaller studios and producers. These smaller organizations churned out countless low-budget features and serials in the 1930s. By the late 1930s, the Western film was widely regarded as a pulp genre in Hollywood, but its popularity was dramatically revived in 1939 by major studio productions such as Dodge City starring Errol Flynn, Jesse James with Tyrone Power, Union Pacific with Joel McRae, Destry Rides again featuring James Stewart and Marlene Dietrich, and the release of John Ford's landmark Western adventure Stagecoach, which became one of the biggest hits of the year. Released through United Artists, Stagecoach made John Wayne a mainstream screen star in the wake of a decade of headlining B-Westerns. Wayne had been introduced to the screen ten years earlier as the leading man in director Raoul Walsh's widescreen The Big Trail, which failed at the box office, due in part to exhibitors' inability to switch over to widescreen during the Depression. After the Western's renewed commercial successes in the late 1930s, the popularity of the Western continued to rise until its peak in the 1950s, when the number of Western films produced outnumbered all other genres combined. Western films often depict conflicts with Native Americans. While early Eurocentric Westerns frequently portray the Injuns as dishonorable villains, the later and more culturally neutral Westerns gave Native Americans a more sympathetic treatment. Other recurring themes of westerns include western treks e.g. the big trail or perilous journeys e.g. stagecoach or groups of bandits terrorizing small towns such as in the Magnificent 7 or revisionist westerns like I Walk the Line 1970 depict sheriffs dueling Early westerns were mostly filmed in the studio, as in other early Hollywood films, but when location shooting became more common from the 1930s, producers of westerns used desolate corners of Arizona, California, Colorado, Kansas, Montana, Nevada, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Texas, Utah, or Wyoming. These settings gave filmmakers the ability to depict vast plains, looming mountains and epic canyons. 
Productions were also filmed on location at movie ranches. Often, the vast landscape becomes more than a vivid backdrop, it becomes a character in the film. After the early 1950s, various widescreen formats such as Cinemascope 1953 and Vistavision used the expanded width of the screen to display spectacular western landscapes. John Ford's use of Monument Valley as an expressive landscape in his films from Stagecoach 1939 to Cheyenne Autumn 1965 present us with a mythic vision of the plains and deserts of the American West, embodied most memorably in Monument Valley, with its buttes and mesas that tower above the men on horseback, whether they be settlers, soldiers, or Native Americans. Topic. Subgenres Author and screenwriter Frank Gruber described seven plots for westerns. Union Pacific Story. The plot concerns construction of a railroad, a telegraph line, or some other type of modern technology or transportation. Wagon train stories fall into this category. Ranch Story. The plot concerns threats to the ranch from rustlers or large landowners attempting to force out the proper owners. Empire Story. The plot involves building a ranch empire or an oil empire from scratch, a classic rags-to-riches plot. Revenge Story. The plot often involves an elaborate chase and pursuit by a wronged individual, but it may also include elements of the classic mystery story. Cavalry and Indian Story. The plot revolves around taming the wilderness for white settlers. Outlaw Story. The outlaw gangs dominate the action. Marshall Story. The lawman and his challenges drive the plot. Gruber said that good writers use dialogue and plot development to develop these basic plots into believable stories. Other subgenres include The Spaghetti Western The Epic Western Singing Cowboy Westerns A few comedy westerns such as Along Came Jones, 1945, in which Gary Cooper spoofed his western persona the Sheepman, 1958, with Glenn Ford poking fun at himself. Cat Baloo, 1965, with a drunk Lee Marvin atop a drunk horse. Blazing Saddles, 1974, in the 1960s and 1970s, the Western was reinvented with the revisionist Western. Topic: <laughs> Classical Western. The Great Train Robbery 1903, Edwin S. Porter's film starring Bronco Billy Anderson, is often cited as the first Western, though George N. Fennan and William K. Everson point out that the Edison Company had played with Western material for several years prior to The Great Train Robbery. Nonetheless, they concur that Porter's film set the pattern of crime, pursuit, and retribution for the Western film as a genre. The film's popularity opened the door for Anderson to become the screen's first cowboy star. He made several hundred Western film shorts. So popular was the genre that he soon faced competition from Tom Mix and William S. Hart. The golden age of the Western is epitomized by the work of several directors, most prominent among them, John Ford, My Darling Clementine, The Horse Soldiers, The Searchers. Others include, Howard Hawks, Red River, Rio Bravo, Anthony Mann, Man of the West, The Man from Laramie, Bud Bodicher, Seven Men from Now, Delmer Daves, The Hanging Tree, 310 to Yuma, John Sturgis, The Magnificent Seven, Last Train from Gun Hill, and Robert Aldrich, Vera Cruz, Alzana's Raid. Topic. Acid Western Film critic Jonathan Rosenbaum refers to a makeshift 1960s and 1970s genre called the acid western, associated with Dennis Hopper, Jim McBride, and Rudy Wurlitzer, as well as films like Monty Hellman's The Shooting (1966), Alejandro Jodorowsky's bizarre experimental film El Topo (The Mole) (1970), and Robert Downey Sr.'s Greaser's Palace (1972). The 1970 film El Topo is an allegorical cult western and underground film about the eponymous character, a violent black-clad gunfighter, and his quest for enlightenment. 
The film is filled with bizarre characters and occurrences, use of maimed and dwarf performers, and heavy doses of Christian symbolism and Eastern philosophy. Some spaghetti westerns also crossed over into the acid western genre, such as Enzo G. Castellari's Mystical Kioma 1976, a western reworking of Ingmar Bergman's The Seventh Seal 1957. More recent acid westerns include Alex Cox's film Walker 1987 and Jim Jarmusch's film Dead Man 1995. Rosenbaum describes the acid western as formulating a chilling, savage frontier poetry to justify its hallucinated agenda." Ultimately, he says, the acid western expresses a counterculture sensibility to critique and replace capitalism with alternative forms of exchange. Topic. Charo, Cabrito or Chile westerns Charo westerns, often featuring musical stars as well as action, have been a standard feature of Mexican cinema since the 1930s. In the 1930s and 1940s, these were typically films about horsemen in rural Mexican society, displaying a set of cultural concerns very different from the Hollywood meta-narrative, but the overlap between Charo movies and westerns became more apparent in the 1950s and 1960s. Topic. Comedy Western This subgenre is imitative in style in order to mock, comment on, or trivialize the Western genre's established traits, subjects, auteurs' styles, or some other target by means of humorous, satiric, or ironic imitation or parody. A prime example of comedy Western includes The Paleface 1948, which makes a satirical effort to Send up Owen Wister's novel The Virginian and all the clichés of the Western from the fearless hero to the final shootout on Main Street. The result was The Paleface 1948, which features a cowardly hero known as Painless, Peter Potter, Bob Hope, an inept dentist who often entertains the notion that he's a crack sharpshooter and accomplished Indian fighter. Topic. Contemporary Western Also known as neo-westerns, these films have contemporary U.S. settings, and they utilize Old West themes and motifs a rebellious anti-hero, open plains and desert landscapes, and gunfights. For the most part, they still take place in the American West and reveal the progression of the Old West mentality into the late 20th and early 21st centuries. This subgenre often features Old West-type characters struggling with displacement in a civilized world that rejects their outdated brand of justice. Examples include Nicholas Ray's The Lusty Men 1952, John Sturgis's Bad Day at Black Rock 1955, Lonely Are the Brave, screenplay by Dalton Trumbo 1962, HUD, starring Paul Newman 1963, The Getaway 1972, Junior Bonner 1972, Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia 1974, Hearts of the West starring Jeff Bridges 1975, Alan J. Pakula's Comes a Horseman 1978, J. W. Coop, directed, co-written by and starring Cliff Robertson, Robert Rodriguez's El Mariachi 1992, Desperado 1995, and Once Upon a Time in Mexico 2003, John Sales's Lone Star 1996, Tommy Lee Jones's The Three Burials of Melquiades Estrada 2005, Ang Lee's Brokeback Mountain 2005, Vim Wenders's Don't Come Knocking 2005, Joel and Ethan Cohen's No Country for Old Men 2007, the television shows Justified 2010 to 2015 and Longmire 2012 to 2017, Hell or High Water 2016 and Wind River 2017, both written by Taylor Sheridan and the superhero film Logan 2017. Call of Juarez: The Cartel is an example of a neo-western video game. Likewise, the television series Breaking Bad, which takes place in modern times, features many examples of western archetypes. According to creator Vince Gilligan, after the first Breaking Bad episode, it started to dawn on me that we could be making a contemporary Western. So you see scenes that are like gunfighters squaring off, like Clint Eastwood and Lee Van Cleef. We have Walt and others like that. 
The precursor to these was the radio series Tales of the Texas Rangers 1950 with Joel McRae, a contemporary detective drama set in Texas, featuring many of the characteristics of traditional westerns. Topic. Electric Western The 1971 film Zachariah starring John Rubinstein, Don Johnson and Pat Quinn was billed as the first electric western. The film featured multiple performing rock bands in an otherwise American West setting. Zachariah featured appearances and music supplied by rock groups from the 1970s, including the James Gang and Country Joe and the Fish as the Cracker Band. Fiddler Doug Kershaw had a musical cameo as does Elvin Jones as a gunslinging drummer named Job Kane. The independent film Hate Horses starring Dominique Swain, Ron Thompson and Paul Dooley billed itself as the second electric western. Topic. Epic western The epic western is a subgenre of the western that emphasizes the story of the American Old West on a grand scale. Many epic westerns are commonly set during a turbulent time, especially a war, as in Sergio Leone's The Good, the Bad and the Ugly 1966, set during the American Civil War, or Sam Peckinpah's The Wild Bunch 1969, set during the Mexican Revolution. One of the grandest films in this genre is Leone's Once Upon a Time in the West 1968, which shows many operatic conflicts centered on control of a town while utilizing wide-scale shots on Monument Valley locations against a broad running time. Other notable examples include The Iron Horse 1924, Duel in the Sunday 1946, The Searchers 1956, Giant 1956, The Big Country 1958, Cimarron 1960, How the West Was Won 1962, Duck, You Sucker 1971, Heaven's Gate 1980, Dances with Wolves 1990, The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford 2007, Django Unchained 2012, and The Revenant 2015. Topic. Euro Western Euro Westerns are Western genre films made in Western Europe. The term can sometimes, but not necessarily, include the spaghetti western subgenre see below. One example of a Euro-Western is the Anglo-Spanish film The Savage Guns 1961. Several Euro-Western films, nicknamed sauerkraut westerns because they were made in Germany and shot in Yugoslavia, were derived from stories by novelist Karl May and were film adaptations of May's work. In the 2010s some new Euro-Westerns emerged like Christian Levering's The Salvation, Martin Kulhoven's Brimstone and Andreas Prohaska's The Dark Valley. Topic. Fantasy Western Fantasy Westerns mixed in fantasy settings and themes, and may include fantasy mythology as background. Some famous examples are Stephen King's The Stand and the Dark Tower series of novels, the Vertigo Comics series Preacher, and Keiichi Sigsawa's light novel series, Kino's Journey, illustrated by Kohaku Kuraboshi. Topic. Florida Western Florida Westerns, also known as Cracker Westerns, are set in Florida during the Second Seminole War. An example is Distant Drums, 1951, starring Gary Cooper. Topic. Horror Western A developing subgenre, with roots in films such as Curse of the Undead 1959 and Billy the Kid vs. Dracula 1966, which depicts the legendary outlaw Billy the Kid fighting against the notorious vampire. Another example is The Ghoul Goes West, an unproduced Ed Wood film to star Bela Lugosi as Dracula in the Old West. 
Recent examples include the films Near Dark 1987, directed by Catherine Bigelow which tells the story about a human falling in love with a vampire, From Dusk Till Dawn 1996, by Robert Rodriguez deals with outlaws battling vampires across the border, Vampires 1998, by John Carpenter tells about a group of vampires and vampire hunters looking for an ancient relic in the West, Ravenous 1999, which deals with cannibalism at a remote U.S. Army outpost, The Burrowers 2008, about a band of trackers who are stalked by the titular creatures, and Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter 2012. Undead Nightmare 2010, an expansion to Red Dead Redemption 2010, is an example of a video game in this genre, telling the tale of a zombie outbreak in the Old West. Bone Tomahawk 2016, one of the most recent entries in the genre received wide critical acclaim for its chilling tale of cannibalism but, like many other movies in the genre, it wasn't a commercial success. <laughs> Indo-Western The first Western films made in India, Mosagalaku Mosagadu 1970, made in Telugu, Mapasakshi Malayalam, Ganga 1972, and Jakama Tamil were based on classic Westerns. Thasvaram 1990, the Malayalam film directed by Barathon and written by noted writer M. T. Vasudevan Nair, is perhaps the most resemblant of the spaghetti Westerns in terms of production and cinematic techniques. Earlier spaghetti westerns laid the groundwork for such films as Adima Changala 1971, starring Prem Nazir, a hugely popular Zapata spaghetti western film in Malayalam, and Sholay 1975, Kote Sikhe 1973, and Thai Mithu Sathiam 1978 are notable curry westerns. Kodama Simam 1990, a Telugu action film starring Chiranjeevi and Mohan Babu was one more addition to the Indo-Western genre and fared well at the box office. It was also the first South Indian movie to be dubbed in English as Hunters of the Indian Treasure Dakari Dinga 2002, starring Telugu Maheshbabu, was applauded by critics but an average runner at box office. Quick Gun Marugan 2009, an Indian comedy film which spoofs Indian Western movies, is based on a character created for television promos at the time of the launch of the music network channel V in 1994, which had cult following. Irambukatai Maratu Singham 2010, a Western adventure comedy film, based on cowboy movies and paying homages to the John Wayne, Clint Eastwood, and Jay Shankar, was made in Tamil. Topic. Martial Arts Western, Wuxia Western While many of these mashups e.g., Billy Jack 1971 and its sequel The Trial of Billy Jack 1974 are cheap exploitation films, others are more serious dramas such as the Kung Fu TV series, which ran from 1972 to 1975. Comedy examples include the Jackie Chan and Owen Wilson collaboration Shanghai Noon 2000. Further subdivisions of this subgenre include ninja westerns and samurai westerns incorporating samurai cinema themes, such as Red Sunday 1971 with Charles Bronson and Toshiro Mifune. Topic. Meat Pie Western The meat pie western, a slang term which plays on the Italo-Western moniker, Spaghetti Western, is a western-style movie or TV series set in Australia, especially the Australian outback or the Australian bush. Films such as Wrangle River 1936, The Kangaroo Kid 1950, The Sundowners 1960, Ned Kelly 1970, The Man from Snowy River 1982, and The Proposition 2005 are all representative of the genre. Topic: <laughs> Northwestern The northern genre is a subgenre of westerns taking place in Alaska or western Canada. Examples include several versions of the Rex Beach novel, The Spoilers including 1930's The Spoilers, with Gary Cooper, and 1942's The Spoilers, with Marlene Dietrich, Randolph Scott and Wayne, The Far Country 1954 with James Stewart, North to Alaska 1960 with Wayne, Death Hunt 1981 with Charles Bronson, and The Gray Fox 1983 with Richard Farnsworth. 
Topic: Austern. Austerns, also known as Red Western, s are produced in Eastern Europe. They were popular in communist Eastern European countries and were a particular favorite of Joseph Stalin, and usually portrayed the American Indians sympathetically, as oppressed people fighting for their rights, in contrast to American Westerns of the time, which frequently portrayed the Indians as villains. Austerns frequently featured gypsies or Turkic people in the role of the Indians, due to the shortage of authentic Indians in Eastern Europe. Goiko Mitik portrayed righteous, kind-hearted, and charming Indian chiefs e.g., in Die Sohn der Grossen Baron 1966, directed by Joseph Mock. He became honorary chief of the Sioux tribe, when he visited the United States in the 1990s and the television crew accompanying him showed the tribe one of his films. American actor and singer Dean Reed, an expatriate who lived in East Germany, also starred in several Austern films. Topic. Pornographic Western The most rare of the Western subgenres, pornographic Westerns use the Old West as a background for stories primarily focused on erotica. The three major examples of the porn Western film are Russ Meyer's Nudie Cutie Wild Gals of the Naked West 1962, and the hardcore A Dirty Western 1975 and Sweet Savage 1979. Sweet Savage starred Aldo Ray, a veteran actor who had appeared in traditional westerns, in a non-sex role. Among video games, Custer's Revenge 1982 is an infamous example, considered to be one of the worst video games of all time. Topic. Ramen Western First used in the publicity of the film Tampopo, the term ramen western is play on words using a national dish as a prefix like spaghetti western or meat pie western. The term is used to describe western style films set in Asia. Examples include The Good, The Bad and The Weird and Sukiyaki Western Django. Topic: Revisionist Western After the early 1960s, many American filmmakers began to question and change many traditional elements of westerns, and to make revisionist westerns that encouraged audiences to question the simple hero versus villain dualism and the morality of using violence to test one's character or to prove oneself right. This is shown in Sam Peckinpah's The Wild Bunch 1969. One major revision was the increasingly positive representation of Native Americans, who had been treated as savages in earlier films examples of such revisionist westerns include ride the high country 1962 richard harris's a man called horse 1970 little big man 1970 soldier blue 1970 man in the wilderness 1971 the outlaw josie wales 1976 dances with wolves 1990 and dead man 1995 a few earlier revisionist westerns gave women more powerful roles, such as Westward the Women 1951, starring Robert Taylor. Another earlier work encompassed all these features, The Last Wagon 1956. In it, Richard Widmark played a white man raised by Comanches and persecuted by whites, with Felicia Farr and Susan Conner playing young women forced into leadership roles. Topic science fiction Western The science fiction Western places science fiction elements within a traditional Western setting. Examples include Jesse James Meets Frankenstein's Daughter 1965, The Valley of Guanji 1969, featuring cowboys and dinosaurs. John Jakes's Six Gun Planet takes place on a future planet colonized by people consciously seeking to recreate the Old West with cowboys riding robot horses. One. The movie Westworld 1973 and its sequel Future World 1976, Back to the Future Part 3 1990, Wild Wild West 1999, Cowboys and Aliens 2011, and the TV series Westworld 2016, based on the movie. Fallout, New Vegas 2010 is an example of a video game that follows this format, with futuristic technology and genetic mutations placed among the western themes and desert sprawl of the Mojave Wasteland. Topic. Space Western 
The space western or space frontier is a subgenre of science fiction which uses the themes and tropes of westerns within science fiction stories. Subtle influences may include exploration of lawless frontiers in deep space, while more overt influences may feature literal cowboys in outer space who use ray guns and ride robotic horses. Examples include the American television series Bravestar, which aired original episodes from September 1987 to February 1988, and Firefly, created by Joss Whedon in 2002, and the films Battle Beyond the Stars (1980), which is a remake of The Magnificent Seven, Outland (1981), which is a remake of High Noon, and Serenity (2005), based on the Firefly TV series. Another example is the Japanese anime series Cowboy Bebop. The classic Western genre has also been a major influence on science fiction films such as the original Star Wars movie of 1977, with 2018's Solo, a Star Wars story more directly featuring Western tropes. Famously Gene Roddenberry pitched the concept of the TV show Star Trek as a wagon train to the stars. Topic. Spaghetti Western During the 1960s and 1970s, a revival of the Western emerged in Italy with the Spaghetti Westerns, also known as Italo Westerns. The most famous of them is The Good, the Bad and the Ugly 1966. Many of these films are low-budget affairs, shot in locations for example, the Spanish desert region of Almería chosen for their inexpensive crew and production costs as well as their similarity to landscapes of the southwestern United States. Spaghetti westerns were characterized by the presence of more action and violence than the Hollywood westerns. Also, the protagonists usually acted out of more selfish motives money or revenge being the most common than in the classical westerns. Some spaghetti westerns demythologized the American western tradition, and some films from the genre are considered revisionist westerns. The western films directed by Sergio Leone were felt by some to have a different tone than the Hollywood westerns. Veteran American actors Charles Bronson, Lee Van Cleef and Clint Eastwood became famous by starring in spaghetti westerns, although the films also provided a showcase for other noted actors such as James Coburn, Henry Fonda, Rod Steiger, Klaus Kinski, and Jason Robards. Eastwood, previously the lead in the television series Rawhide, unexpectedly found himself catapulted into the forefront of the film industry by Leone's A Fistful of Dollars. Topic. Snow Western The snow western subgenre is a western based during mid to late winter, and set in the continental United States. It is a more rare western, as most focus during warm weather or areas where it doesn't snow. A popular film of this subgenre is Quentin Tarantino's The Hateful Eight. Topic. Weird Western The weird western subgenre blends elements of a classic western with other elements. The Wild Wild West television series, television movies, and 1999 film adaptation blend the western with steampunk. The Jonah Hex franchise also blends the western with superhero elements. The film Western Religion 2015, by writer and director James O'Brien, introduces the devil into a traditional Wild West setting. The Old Man Logan graphic novel combines the elements of superhero and post-apocalyptic fiction with Western. Topic. Genre studies In the 1960s academic and critical attention to cinema as a legitimate art form emerged. With the increased attention, film theory was developed to attempt to understand the significance of film. From this environment emerged, in conjunction with the literary movement, an enclave of critical studies called genre studies. This was primarily a semantic and structuralist approach to understanding how similar films convey meaning. One of the results of genre studies is that some have argued that Westerns need not take place in the American West or even in the 19th century, as the codes can be found in other types of films. 
For example, a very typical Western plot is that an Eastern lawman heads west, where he matches wits and trades bullets with a gang of outlaws and thugs, and is aided by a local lawman who is well-meaning but largely ineffective until a critical moment when he redeems himself by saving the hero's life. This description can be used to describe any number of westerns, but also other films such as Die Hard itself a loose reworking of High Noon and Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai, which are frequently cited examples of films that do not take place in the American West but have many themes and characteristics common to westerns. Likewise, films set in the American Old West may not necessarily be considered westerns. Topic. Influences Being period drama pieces, both the Western and Samurai genre influenced each other in style and themes throughout the years. The Magnificent Seven was a remake of Akira Kurosawa's film The Seven Samurai, and A Fistful of Dollars was a remake of Kurosawa's Yojimbo, which itself was inspired by Red Harvest, an American detective novel by Dashiell Hammett. Kurosawa was influenced by American westerns and was a fan of the genre, most especially John Ford. Despite the Cold War, the western was a strong influence on Eastern Bloc cinema, which had its own take on the genre, the so called Red Western or Austern. Generally, these took two forms either straight westerns shot in the Eastern Bloc, or action films involving the Russian Revolution and Civil War and the Basmachi Rebellion, an offshoot of the western genre as the post-apocalyptic western, in which a future society, struggling to rebuild after a major catastrophe, is portrayed in a manner very similar to the 19th century frontier. Examples include the Postman and the Mad Max series, and the computer game series Fallout. Many elements of space travel series and films borrow extensively from the conventions of the western genre. This is particularly the case in the space western subgenre of science fiction. Peter Hyams' Outland transferred the plot of High Noon to I.O., Moon of Jupiter. Gene Roddenberry, the creator of the Star Trek series, pitched his show as Wagon Train to the Stars early on, but admitted later that this was more about getting it produced in a time that loved Western-themed TV series than about its actual content. The Book of Eli depicts the post-apocalypse as a western with large knives. More recently, the space opera series Firefly used an explicitly western theme for its portrayal of frontier worlds. Anime shows like Cowboy Bebop, Trigun and Outlaw Star have been similar mixes of science fiction and western elements. The science fiction western can be seen as a subgenre of either westerns or science fiction. Elements of Western films can be found also in some films belonging essentially to other genres. For example, Kelly's Heroes is a war film, but action and characters are Western-like. The British film Zulu set during the Anglo-Zulu War has sometimes been compared to a Western, even though it is set in South Africa. The character played by Humphrey Bogart in film noir films such as Casablanca and To Have and Have Not, an individual bound only by his own private code of honor, has a lot in common with the classic Western hero. In turn, the Western has also explored noir elements, as with the films Pursued and Sugar Creek. In many of Robert A. Heinlein's books, the settlement of other planets is depicted in ways explicitly modeled on American settlement of the West. For example, in his tunnel in the sky settlers set out to the planet New Canaan via an interstellar teleporter portal across the galaxy, in Conestoga wagons, their captain sporting mustaches and a little goatee and riding a Palomino horse, with Heinlein explaining that the colonists would need to survive on their own for some years, so horses are more practical than machines. Stephen King's The Dark Tower is a series of seven books that meshes themes of westerns, high fantasy, science fiction and horror. The protagonist Roland Diskane is a gunslinger whose image and personality are largely inspired by the man with no name from Sergio Leone's films. In addition, the superhero fantasy genre has been described as having been derived from the cowboy hero, only powered up to omnipotence in a primarily urban setting. 
The Western genre has been parodied on a number of occasions, famous examples being Support Your Local Sheriff, Cat Ballou, Mel Brooks's Blazing Saddles, and Russeller's Rhapsody. George Lucas's Star Wars films use many elements of a Western, and Lucas has said he intended for Star Wars to revitalize cinematic mythology, a part the Western once held. The Jedi, who take their name from Jidejeki, are modeled after samurai, showing the influence of Kurosawa. The character Han Solo dressed like an archetypal gunslinger, and the Mos Eisley Cantina is much like an Old West saloon. Meanwhile, films such as The Big Lebowski, which plucked actor Sam Elliott out of the Old West and into a Los Angeles bowling alley, and Midnight Cowboy, about a southern boy turned gigolo in New York who disappoints a client when he doesn't measure up to Gary Cooper, transplanted Western themes into modern settings for both purposes of parody and homage. Topic. Literature Western fiction is a genre of literature set in the American Old West, most commonly between the years of 1860 and 1900. The first critically recognized Western was The Virginian 1902 by Owen Wister. Classic Wild West Literature other well-known writers of Western fiction include Zane Grey, from the early 1900s, Ernest Haycox, Luke Short, and Louis L'Amour, from the mid-20th century. Many writers better known in other genres, such as Lee Brackett, Elmore Leonard, and Larry McMurtry, have also written Western novels. The genre's popularity peaked in the 1960s, due in part to the shuttering of many pulp magazines, the popularity of televised Westerns, and the rise of the spy novel. Readership began to drop off in the mid to late 1970s and reached a new low in the 2000s. Most bookstores, outside of a few western states, now only carry a small number of western novels and short story collections. Literary forms that share similar themes include stories of the American frontier, the gaucho literature of Argentina, and tales of the settlement of the Australian outback. Topic television Television westerns are a subgenre of the western. When television became popular in the late 1940s and 1950s, TV westerns quickly became an audience favorite. Beginning with rebroadcasts of existing films, a number of movie cowboys had their own TV shows. As demand for the western increased, new stories and stars were introduced. A number of long-running TV westerns became classics in their own right, such as The Lone Ranger (1949–1957), The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp (1955–1961), Gunsmoke (1955–1975), Maverick (1957–1962), Have Gun, Will Travel (1957–1963), Wagon Train (1957–1965), Sugarfoot (1957). To 1961, The Rifleman, 1958 to 1963, Rawhide, 1959 to 1966, Bonanza, 1959 to 1973, The Virginian, 1962 to 1971, and The Big Valley, 1965 to 1969. The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp was the first Western television series written for adults, premiering four days before Gunsmoke on September 6, 1955. The peak year for television Westerns was 1959, with 26 such shows airing during primetime. At least six of them were connected in some extent to Wyatt Earp, The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp, Bat Masterson, Tombstone Territory, Broken Arrow, Johnny Ringo, and Gunsmoke. Increasing costs of American television production weeded out most action half-hour series in the early 1960s, and their replacement by hour-long television shows, increasingly in color. Traditional westerns died out in the late 1960s as a result of network changes in demographic targeting along with pressure from parental television groups. Future entries in the genre would incorporate elements from other genera, such as crime drama and mystery whodunit elements. Western shows from the 1970s included H.E.C. Ramsey, Kung Fu, Little House on the Prairie, and McLeod. In the 1990s and 2000s, hour-long westerns and slickly packaged made-for-TV movie westerns were introduced, such as, Lonesome Dove 1989, and Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. As well, new elements were once again added to the Western formula, such as the Western science fiction show Firefly, created by Joss Whedon in 2002. 
Deadwood was a critically acclaimed Western series which aired on HBO from 2004 through 2006. Hell on Wheels, a fictionalized story of the construction of the first transcontinental railroad, aired on AMC for five seasons between 2011 and 2016. Longmire was a Western series that centers on Walt Longmire, a sheriff in fictional Absaroka County, Wyoming. Originally aired on the A&E Network from 2012 to 2014 it was picked up by Netflix in 2015 until the show's conclusion in 2017. Topic. Visual art A number of visual artists focused their work on representations of the American Old West. American West-oriented art is sometimes referred to as Western art by Americans. This relatively new category of art includes paintings, sculptures, and sometimes Native American crafts. Initially, subjects included exploration of the Western states and cowboy themes. Frederick Remington and Charles M. Russell are two artists who captured the Wild West on canvas. Some art museums, such as the Buffalo Bill Center of the West in Wyoming and the Autry National Center in Los Angeles, feature American Western art. Topic: Other media. The popularity of westerns extends beyond films, literature, television, and visual art to include numerous other media forms. Topic. Anime and manga With anime and manga, the genre tends towards the science fiction western e.g., Cowboy Bebop 1998 anime, Trigun 1995-2007 manga, and Outlaw Star 1996-1999 manga. Although contemporary westerns also appear, such as Koya no Shonen Isamu, a 1971 shonen manga about a boy with a Japanese father and a Native American mother, or El Cazador de la Bruja, a 2007 anime television series set in modern-day Mexico. Part 7 of the manga series Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is based in the American western setting. The story follows racers in a transcontinental horse race, the Steel Ball Run race. Topic. Comics Western comics have included serious entries, such as the classic comics of the late 1940s and early 1950s namely Kid Colt, Outlaw, Rawhide Kid, and Red Rider or more modern ones as Blueberry, cartoons, and parodies such as Coco Bill and Lucky Luke. In the 1990s and 2000s, Western comics leaned toward the Weird West subgenre, usually involving supernatural monsters, or Christian iconography as in Preacher. However, more traditional Western comics are found throughout this period e.g., Jonah Hex and Loveless. Topic. Games Western arcade games, computer games, role-playing games, and video games are often either straightforward westerns or western horror hybrids. Some western-themed computer games include The Oregon Trail 1971, Mad Dog McCree 1990, Sunset Riders 1991, Outlaws 1997, Desperados Series 2001, Red Dead Revolver 2004, Gun 2005, Call of Juarez 2007, Red Dead Redemption 2010, and Red Dead Redemption 2 2018. Other video games adapt the science fiction western or weird west subgenres such as Fallout 1997, Gunman Chronicles 2000, Darkwatch 2005, The Borderlands series 2009, Fallout New Vegas 2010, and Hard West 2015. Topic: <laughs> Radio Dramas. Western radio dramas were very popular from the 1930s to the 1960s. 
Some popular shows include The Lone Ranger, first broadcast in 1933, The Cisco Kid, first broadcast in 1942, Dr. Sixgun, first broadcast in 1954, Have Gun Will Travel, first broadcast in 1958, and Gunsmoke, first broadcast in 1952. Topic: Web series. Westerns have been showcased in short episodic web series. Examples include League of Steam, Red Bird and Arkansas Traveler. See also <laughs>